Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 28. This tutorial we are going to focus on fixing a few little bugs that have arisen and we're also going to create a splash screen. Don't forget click on the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, the two major bugs that we have at the moment are, if you've been following the series, um, well, for however many hours this has gone on for now, um, we have the red screen when we get hit still staying on screen, and we also have the gun clipping into walls. So we're going to focus on the gun first of all. Now, in order to get this working, it's not theoretically a glitch. It's just the way our gun is set up, and we have to use something called layers to resolve that. So the way it works is we have our main scene on one layer, as it were, and the gun on a separate layer. So the gun is always visible, even if we're right against a wall or door or one of these assets. So in order to get this working, what we need to do is go to where our gun is, and it's on the first person character. So on there, we need to right click and create a new camera. Now this camera is going to act as uh, something that only renders the weapon. So what we see from our first person character is exactly that minus the weapon. So that means this camera renders only the weapon. So it's the inverse of our first person character camera. So in order to do that, we go to our handgun or whatever gun you have, and we need to set a new layer over here at the top. So where we have layer default, let's now click that and click on add layer. We can then select any of these layers. So let's go with layer 10, for example, and choose weapon and hit return and make sure we go back to it and select that layer right there. And yes, change any children as well. So every weapon you create within your game should be layered as the weapon. So next thing you need to do is we need to change everything on the first person character. So culling mask, we need to change it from everything and remove weapon. Now, if I press play and we go to pick up our weapon, we have theoretically picked it up but it will no longer show because that camera is no longer rendering anything that is in the layer weapon. So next thing to do is go to this new camera that we've created and we need to go on the clear flags and select depth only. And we also need to set a depth higher than zero. So it could be, I don't know, it could be 80, for example, 80 is a good number, I guess. But as long as it isn't zero, that's all that really matters at this point. So what we need to do now is on culling mask, select nothing, but then select weapon. So what we've done here is made this camera only render the weapon layer and this camera render everything except the weapon layer. That means these two will overlap each other and we'll be able to see the weapon at all times. So let's press play and check that out. So we'll still be able to pick it up as usual. It will still appear and our weapon is there and it no longer glitches into the wall or anything else for that matter. So that is that bug resolved. It will no longer glitch. So the second glitch that we had was, or rather the second major glitch, there's probably other little glitches here, there and everywhere, but they'd be much easier to kind of work out. It's the major glitches we need to resolve more than anything. The second one was the red screen staying on. Now we're going to come up with a cool, unique way to uh, get the red screen to disappear always if it's on for too long. And the reason I want to do it this way is because I want to show you uh, a little bit more how coding works because I think coding is always something that people struggle with more than anything. So this bug fix is going to be more uh, a lesson in how coding works in C Sharp more than anything. So in order to get this working, what we need to do is if we go to our red screen, which is Hurt Flash, and we're going to go to scripts. And this script can be defined as, oh gosh, what can we call it? It's a miscellaneous script. So to be honest, I'm going to keep it in its main folder. Right click, create C Sharp script, and let's call this um, remove 
Flash. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to do it one way first of all and basically show you why it's not working as intended. So we're going to say in void start, for example, we'll say this dot game object dot set active and in brackets false semicolon and save. Now logically this should work. So let's head back into Unity. Quickly let that compile. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto Hurt Flash right there. And I'm going to press play and then I'm going to turn it on up here. So it should theoretically turn itself off pretty much straight away and it does. However, if we do it again, it doesn't go off. So if this were to happen, the red would be stuck on our screen once again. So why does this happen? It happens because the void start method does indeed start. However, it only ever runs once while the scene is loaded. So although it runs for us now, it won't run again. It will only ever run once, even when the script goes off and comes back on. So the logic of it works. However, the actual code doesn't. So we're going to get rid of void start and void update, and we're going to do it a little differently. So we are going to have a bool to detect whether our um, screen is on or not. So public bool, and we'll just call it turn off, and we'll make it false by default. Now this is going to be done in a coroutine simply because we're going to give it a fifth of a second to turn itself off. If it's not gone off within a fifth of a second, it will turn itself off. So to do that, we'll go I enumerator and we'll just call it turn off, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we will yield return new, wait for seconds, and we'll just have 0.2f because it's a float, semicolon. After that, we will say turn off is equal to false again because we are going to uh, put it as true uh, in a moment. So turn off equals false again, semicolon. And then we'll say this dot game object dot set active false, semicolon. So in order to get this working now, what we need to do is we need to go to the update method. Now in the update method, we say if in brackets, turn off equals false, open curly bracket. So basically, if this screen has just come on, we say turn off equals true. So it can't run again, only runs just the once. And then we start that coroutine. So start coroutine and in brackets, turn off, up oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So all we need to do now is, well, nothing really, because the script is already attached to it. So we're going to try this out. So we're going to simulate that glitch. So imagine us getting shot and the red screen stays on. So let's simulate it by turning it on. And off it goes once again. So no matter what, that is going to go off even if we bug the game out. So let's give that a try, see if we can glitch it. Oh. Nope, couldn't do it then. I at least I don't think we could. And uh, nope. Excuse me. Let's try it one more time. Oh. And it's come back on. So what's happened here is it still believes that turn off is um, on. So theoretically, if we turn it off, it will go off. Now, there is a way we can actually get around that. What we would need to do is we can say no matter what, that we need to basically turn off after uh, however many seconds. We could actually theoretically start a new coroutine and um, 
basically, I guess we could actually get rid of that. I get. I mean, maybe we could actually shorten it. Because when I test these things out, I go through different methods and I try it and usually come up with the best one. So let's see how this works. <coughs> Gosh, I'm uh, losing my voice today, guys. Okay, so. Okay. Oh, we forgot the ammo. <laughs> oh. There we go. That has resolved the glitch. It was less code than we thought. There we go. And it goes off straight away. So, that's that one fixed. So, last on the list for this tutorial is that splash screen. So, I'm saving this scene. And we will go to a new scene. Now, this is actually real, real simple. It's literally going to take us about 60 seconds to create this one. So, game object, UI, and let's go to raw image. Let's stretch it on the anchoring. Zero everything out. And I'm just going to set it as black. Now, I have my game logo um, here. I'm going to import. So, in the textures folder, Drag, oops, drag and drop. And obviously, you've got your own logo to deal with. I'm going to include another uh, raw image there and just drag and drop that onto there. So obviously, let's forget my words out. Obviously, a splash screen is just a quick little scene for you to display your studio. In this case, that is mine. So pressing play is just basically, there we go. There's the first scene that we would have within our game. So, what I would recommend is sort your bugs out, get this scene up and running, and let's save that as. In fact, now I think about it, why don't we use that other scene that we actually have already set to zero, the sample scene. Let's quickly do that instead of creating a new scene, just because it saves us a little bit of energy. Um, so, yeah, game object, UI. Raw image, let's stretch that. Zero, 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 zero. Change it to black. And let's bring in the raw image for your game studio or whatever you want to be. Just have your name, I guess. And there we go. And save. So the reason I've done that, just to quickly let you know, build settings, scene zero is always the first scene to load. Hence why this is our first scene. If we were to build our game, this scene would load straight away. So I'm going to save that and done with that. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to focus on something called post processing. Uh, so we're going to give it a little bit of a, a more modern look. However, you don't necessarily have to if you're happy with the look uh, it currently has. So it's probably a tutorial you could skip over a little bit onto uh, number 30 if you wanted to. Uh, but for now, we're going to focus on that and then we're going to bring everything together after that. So there's not many tutorials left in this series. Um, so yeah, it's coming along nicely. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.